Greetings out there in Internetia. I am your host, Zyza for Q's for Muggington. The Q, of course, is for K, and the K is for Gubo. Mm -hmm. I'm here tonight to play more of The Longest Journey. A, uh, which indeed has proven to be quite a long journey. We're still, we're still going. Ah, yes, the timer. Yes, the timer is going. Uh, I think I've got, yep, I've got my posts up. And, uh, it, it took a bit, actually, for me to figure out the puzzle that we were stuck on last time. I've, uh, I've got some notes that I'll be showing later, uh, before we start growth cycling. But, here we are. We're ready to play more of the game. And, uh, that's gonna take a bit, I think. I don't think we're anywhere near the end. We are up to, how? Yeah, how many videos have there been so far? I've just got to check this real quick. Uh, we are up to part eight. And I have no idea how long this game is. You know? So, uh, this could be longer than Yeez. I wasn't prepared for this game to be longer than Yeez. But here we are. And, well, obviously here we are. You know, we keep, uh, being here. As we are. And I don't know... It wouldn't be the longest journey if it was short. That's true. That is unfortunately true, and I hate that that's true. I I actually kind of resent that. <laughs> ah. Still longer than Yeez 8 in terms of video. Oh, I am... I'm text bubbling all over you. Hold on. Uh, let me just... I'm just getting the game, like, loaded up. Oh, I should have, uh, probably... Hmm. Well, give me a moment here. There's something I want to do real quick. We're just gonna pop over here for a second. And I'm gonna make sure that I've got the, uh... There we go. There we go. Okay. Now we can go back to the pre-stream screen. And let me just scoot this up a bit. Okay, and hello, Saria. Uh, the stream anniversary is March 19th. Ugh. I am not prepared. I am really not ready for that. Uh. Oh, that's so soon. That's so soon. I don't want it to have been a year yet. I am, uh... I get tired, and I worry that, uh, after a year, like, what what's left for me to do, really? I might as well just pack it in. I might as well just go home. Well, technically, I am home. I'm broadcasting from home. But, you know, like, after a year of streaming, what is left to do? I think I've played all the video games. All of them. And, uh, I, I just don't see what's left, where, where it's left to go. Well, well, I'm sure we can find something. I'm sure we'll dig something out of the vault. Uh, maybe I will start reading public domain books. Night Vale? I don't think they've made a Night Vale game. I think if they tried to make a Night Vale game, it would fall prey... To the same curse as, like, the Homestuck games. Namely, everybody would get really mad about problems that don't actually exist. Ah, uh, wind the fandom up for a while. Way to go. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're angry about anything I've said, there is a comment section below the video. I could use more comments. 
So, you know, funnel your hate into that chat box. And it has gone 8 o'clock, but there are still 19 seconds left on my timer because I started it late. More the fool me. That's what you get when you play with time. It never does anything but hurt you. Anyway, over to the uh, longest journey. And in the spirit of this, this menu screen here, uh, I've prepared some images. So you may remember that last time we got stuck, uh, it was on a puzzle routing giant heads around. And April could talk into a head and it would come out somewhere else, etc. Well, first off, I drew... Mm, well, that doesn't help. There we go. First off, I drew out all of the uh, symbols. So, you know, we've got the one below a tall tree. We've got the one that looks like a mouth. Although, I'm really sorry. I've drawn, like, a man pooping. That's depressing. Uh, this one was just an arrow, and this one looked kind of like a bunny or an upside-down jellyfish. And that overlooks the sea. And it's, you know, it flipped over, overlooks the sea. So, upside-down mushroom made sense to me. Anyway, I rooted those out. I noticed that April can only talk to the one that's under a tall tree, so we had to start there. And from there, I wound up, like, where can this connect to? Where can each one connect to? And, uh, I drew out a little map, and this one looks even more like a butt pooping. And I'm really sorry about that. I can't help that. But we're gonna be, uh, working through this... This line. And hopefully, if I've got everything right, the puzzle will be solved. I haven't tested this yet. So that's going to be exciting. Uh, I could be incredibly fucking wrong. And if so, then I'm going to cry on stream. Please look forward to it. So let's get going. Uh, continue. From here. Yeah, you can see me, uh, tr like I had to run around and do the rooting. And it auto-saved. But here's where we left off. Alright, so, what we gotta do is, wait, I have to get out the physical notebook now because I closed the pictures. What we have to do is, uh, go back down to the tree, make a start at rooting these. Wait, no, the first thing we gotta do is go back to the mouth and get our key. Because without the key, none of the rest of this stuff is gonna happen. So April's just gotta climb up there. Yeah, this key. We don't have this, nothing happens. <laughs> Alright, uh, let me leave. Uh, we're headed down to the jungle. Um, one sec while it looks like my phone has done some kind of update on Twitch and also opened my e-reader for some reason. I don't know why it's done that. That's not helpful. Thank you, Twitch. Okay. So, to the one under the tree. And, uh, you notice that this is the only one April can talk to. So there's that. All right, we've got it set to, uh... We have it set to talk to itself, and we need to turn this... ...so that it is talking to... ...that is listening to... No, we have to set it to listen to itself. Right, like that. And then we have to set it to talk to the... ...the one above the sea. The rabbit-eared one. 
So I just dial that in. Uh, let's grab the key. And let's make a quick test to make sure that that actually Hello? happened. Hello? Doesn't seem like it's working. Well, it showed us a flash of that, uh, of the one it was trying to connect to. So, we just need to root through it, you know? I absolutely promise I've got this. I do not promise I've got this. I have no idea if I've got this. But this seems like, from my little testings I've done, this seems correct. Alright, uh, look this in. It's gotta listen to the S. No, that's the talk to you arrow. Gotta listen to the S. So, set it to listen there. Uh, these big parts that are gouged out, as far as I can tell, they just, none of them are important. Alright, and now the top one has to talk to this arrow. Good, good. Grab that. Uh... See, the arrow is the ancient city one, which is off to the west. Uh, this took about an hour and a half for me to root out the possibilities and make sure I was probably on the right track. Uh, this one talks to... The butt. Good. Good. Yes. Which means I fucked it up already. Alright, let's go all the way around the dial. It doesn't tell you, you know, wh whether it rotates the top or the bottom. You would think I would know, but you would be assuming an awful lot. I don't actually know things. I just... Uh, intuit them using my instincts. Actual knowledge is vastly overrated. Alright, I need it to come from the arrow. I think? The arrow is on here, isn't it? Oh god, did I fuck it up? Fuck this up. I think I might have fucked this up. Let me go around again. No, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um I... I think I might have fucked something up. Let me go check the uh, other other connections. It's another one of those magical public telephone statues. Yeah, it is, April. Yeah, it is. It's, oh, this is listening to the wrong spot, isn't it? Alright, so I did mess something up. No, wait, wait. Oh, this! I've got the, uh... Oh, I had it backwards. Okay, no, this is fine. This is fine, um... Alright, the one overlooking the sea. Because each one has to talk to itself. 
at now wait you know I thought I had this solved I really thought I had this solved um god what have I done it's hilarious actually the this entire thing disintegrated the second that I was uh Second, I actually tried to test it. Um, no, I've, I've. Hold on. All right, receive from. All right, what, what have I done? It comes from S. So it listens to S, and then it speaks out to... Son of a bitch! I can't... Please at least label your things, game designers, please! What I'm gonna be it's turning. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. Yes, I know, April. It's like a keyhole. In fact, it is a keyhole. All right, I gotta back around to there. Okay. Ah, uh, now I have to link it to the arrow. I think. All the way around, all the way around, all the way around. Come on, there we go. Okay, arrow, cake. All right, that's that's correct, I think. Now go back down, go to the ancient city. Whoop, go to the ancient city. here. We listen to the jellyfish. Alright, we've got a marker for that. That's good. You bastard. Alright. We speak to the arrow. Wait, that's correct, isn't it? Now the arrow is here. That's where we are. We do need to speak to the giant butt. Yeah, all right. I had it right. I actually did have it right. I just, uh... I got myself confused over what the symbols meant. All right, talk to the giant butt. Listen to... the one overlooking the sea, right? Okay. We're good. Now we should be able to go back to, uh, go back here. To the tree. Right, I'm going to save just in case. Save over here. This should do it, if my calculations are correct. Hello? Hello?
<sighs> oh, finally. <laughs> good. Yes, good. We'll be there. Now I can talk to him on speakerphone, I guess. No, not the stick man. I don't care about the stick man. No, I don't I don't care about the stick man. Talk to the ear. Hello, Quaman? Oh my god! It's your wake up call, sir. Hmm. How long will I be asleep? About a month. I need to have a second I'm so glad we have subtitles what for this. No use. Quamon be an outcast. No one like him. Oh cool. So now we can have a nice therapy session on unprotected bandwidth. Well, everybody on the island listens to us. I'm glad we're doing this. Where are you going? That be a secret. Quaman wants to be left alone. Could you please stop snoring? Quaman be snoring? No one ever tell Quaman he be snoring. But then Quaman always be sleeping by his lonesome. No woman like Quaman. That is not my problem, Quaman. Don't say that about yourself, Quaman. I'm sure of it. You know, it's kind of uncomfortable to be discussing this in a public like this. Yeah, it's weird. Yes. Everyone be hearing about Quaman now. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your problems? Face to face? What be the point? I'm a good listener, and I'd like to be your friend. That'd be the point. Quaman not sure if he want friend now. Oh, you big sulky baby. Why am I trying to be friend? Because I have to get to wherever he is for some pure reason. So let's befriend him and then leave and we'll never see him again. That's how we work. That's how we that's how we operate. We're adventure game protagonists. We are like the wind. Please let me be your friend. Why? That's a good question. Why? Because I'm lonely too. I don't really know anybody on this island, and I need some help. Well, Quama be wanting to help, but. But. Okay. Quama be your friend and talk to you. My secret place be in the ruins of the old temple, by the wells. Follow the stream up from the rock beach, and go right where it branches. Okay, you realize it's not much of a secret Thanks. anymore. I'll be there as soon as I can. Cool. Okay, well, we now have a new, uh, a new place we can go. Quaman's Place. Let's go hang out with Guaman. It's another one of those statues come phone booths. They must have been popular in their time. It's a deep well with cold, brackish water and some seriously demented albino fish. The demented albino fish sounds like... I don't know, a late 90s ska band? That's Quaman, the not-so-quiet giant. All right, let's get to... The, oh, we can come down. Okay, that's cool. Whoa, you are big. You're just about the biggest person I've ever met. Quaman be a freak. No one be liking him. I 
didn't mean it that way. I just meant... April, you know just what to say, don't you? I'm sorry. I like tall guys. Really, I do. You be the only one, then. Because no one else want anything to do with Quaman. Okay, you want to... Oh, there you are. Okay. How did you come to be on this island? That be a long story. God, what isn't? Do you want Quaman to be telling you? Yeah. Sure, let's hear the... We're not going to get anywhere unless we hear, like, the full tale of Quaman. So... Sure, I have time. Tell me the story. Many long moons ago, Quaman be happy. He be working at the Circa in Corazon, where he be big attraction. A very big what attraction. Quaman be the world's strongest man. He be popular. People come to see him from all the Northlands. Some even from east of the Bay of Fire. But then there be an accident. And the circuit tell Quaman to leave. That he be dangerous. And that no one be paying to see him anymore. What kind of accident? Quaman's most popular feat be the breaking of large rocks with his fist. Everyone would applaud when the rock be breaking. Then one day, the Kala be at the circuit to see the performers. He be saying, Quaman, I hear of him breaking a large rock with his fist. This I want to see. But my performance be over that day, and there be no rock to break. So the Circa Ringmaster Obron, he be saying, let's get a rock in here, any big rock at all. So they bring in this rock that Quaman never be crushing before. Kwama not be sure if it is a good idea, because rock can be dangerous when it breaks. But Obron be saying, this you must do. The Caliph wants to see. We do not disappoint the Caliph of Khorasan, or we lose our heads. So Kwama break the rock, and when it breaks... What, what happened? There'll be large pieces of rock flying everywhere and one piece be hitting the Caliph and one his son. The Caliph be not seriously hurt, but his son be unconscious and bleeding from the head. They say to Quaman, run, get away from the Circa and Khorasan, or the Caliph will have his head. So Quaman run, and he get passage on ship leaving that night. When the ship passed this island, Quaman be jumping into sea and swimming ashore. And now, he be here. Yeah. A tragic tale of workplace safety. If you don't know the materials, you can't work with them. Uh, frankly, I'm on Quaman's side here, but there is no such thing as, like, Fantasy World OSHA. Which, you know, sucks. But... All right, what about the Orlowal? What happened between you and the Orlowal? Oh, Quaman be so clumsy, so dangerous. He should not be among people. He be only hurting them. The Orlowal be kind, letting Quaman live and fish in their village. But then Quaman be stepping over a young Orlowal almost breaking his shell. All right, I remember this story. All the wall tell Quaman to leave village, to not come back because he may kill an Orwal. They tell him to go as far away as possible. Quaman be sad because he liked the Orwal and because Quaman be having the best fishing place in all of Elias. He lose his friends and his food. What do you eat now? Quaman fish in these wells here. But the fish that live down there be small and not very tasty. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you Would wanna you go like back? To back to the Orlawal village? Oh yes. Kwama be wishing that more than anything in the world. I saw an Orlawal down by the beach, just outside the village. It seemed to be in pain, but I didn't know what to do. Perhaps if you come along, you can help him out and get back in favor with the Orlawal people. Yes, perhaps Kwaman can help. Even if the Orlawal do not want him back. Here it is, the, uh, Orlawal? Can you help it? Perhaps Kwaman can help. Poor Orlawal. He'd be crying for help. Uh, Kwaman see what be wrong. The Orlawal not shed its shell when time come. And now it be stuck in the show. Why didn't the other Orlawal come to its assistance? Their claws be no good for this work. They be helpless. But Kwaman help. Kwaman be good with his hands. Kwaman be happy. Kwaman accept your graceful thanks, sir. Thank you. You be making Kwaman very happy. Kwaman, accept your offer and be grateful to the Orlawal people. Thank you very much. What? What did he say? Why did you thank him? Orlawal be inviting Kwaman to stay on the cliff above the village, where he can fish again. Kwaman be very, very happy now. Yeah, that works. You understand what it's saying? Orlawal language be easy to understand. It be just click and clack and clock. I'm so happy for you, Kwaman. Go on, don't let me hold you back. Click, clack, clack, little lip of shells. Um, so that, uh, that worked out. I was wondering how we were gonna help that crab with his shell. That Olawal, I guess. And now I guess he lives up here. Yep, there he is. Sitting on the dock of the bay, letting the tide drift Kwaman away. Is fishing. Hey, Kwaman, how's, it going, how's the fish biting? With its teeth? But not today. Why's that? Kwaman be not certain. The fish always bite before, but then Kwaman be having lure. Now no lure, just bait. Um, what do you need? What do you need to make a lure? Kwaman can make lure with just anything, as long as it be colorful and not get heavy in water. You're oh. a real DIY guy, don't you know? Always be something wrong with Kwaman. That no, was that's actually a compliment. Mm. Oh. Happy fishing. Thank you. Something colorful that doesn't get heavy in the water. Ah. Uh... No, not the organic plastic. Candy wrapper. Could this wrapper work as a lure? Yes. Yes, with some work. It'd be perfect for a lure. I'm just gonna now, follow this man around and solve all his problems. And hopefully catch many fish. Cool. Uh Hello, Kwaman. That, Hello, that's April. It? Can I borrow your fishing rod? Kwaman must catch fish first, so he can eat. After Kwaman catch fish, April can borrow fishing rod. Okay, cool. Are you happy now, Kwaman? Kwaman be happy. He be wanting fish to bite. But if they do not, Kwaman still be happy. It's a good happy life, fishing. Kwaman. Thank you. It's a good life. Well, you know, um... As adventure game protagonists, 
we don't get to improve the lives of many people. Like, most of the time, we just go up, break their shit, lock them in a room, give them, like, diarrhea, steal their eyeball. We don't get to improve a lot of people's lives. Uh, if we've made Kwame happy, I rank that as a victory. We, we've done something. We've accomplished something here today. I have no idea what else we were supposed to be doing. Um... Alright, this thing. According to Wick, it's a lunar cannon. Apparently, it's powerful enough to send a stick man to the moon. Oh, sure. In a Jules Verne novel, perhaps. Ah, the classics. Alright, this thing is broken, and I forget how. How come you're not working on your lunar cannon now? Because of that infernal noise is why! What noise? But Kwaman has moved back to the Orlowal village. He's not going to disturb you again, trust me. Really? How the heck did that happen? Nah, I don't care. The important thing is, we can work again. Thanks, lady. All right, now they're going to send a stick man to the moon, and that will, in some material or immaterial way, uh, further my goals, I guess. Could you guys walk any faster? You really can't, huh? Okay. Well, let's check in and see how they're doing. Tie a rope to him and launch him into the side of the mountain. That's more likely, but that will form a bridge, and that means that I can get... Can't talk. Busy. I'd be happy to talk to you later, but I got some fine-tuning to do before I'm done. Okay. How's it going? Almost there. Oh, uh, one tiny little problem, though. And that is? We don't have a bowstring for our, uh, uh... Propulsion drive mechanism, Wick. Uh, what do you say? Uh, yeah, we need a bowstring. Uh, something strong and flexible and sinewy. So now I need to go borrow like a what? fishing rod. I don't know, lady. I'm no engineer. I'm just a supervisor. String made from animal guts would be perfect. Yeah, but look at us. Do we look like the kind of stick men who'd make good hunters? Do you see me going after a gank beast carrying what? A cone? A dry leaf sharpened to a razor edge? <laughs> a dry leaf sharpened to a razor's edge. Yeah, that sounds lovely. What if I try to give him this roll? They give approximately zero shits. Alright, well, let's go see if we can get that fishing string. Because if we can get the fishing string that's probably made out of, like, high-quality nylon intestines or... I don't know anatomy, but it's probably made out of something juicy and absorbent and, uh, okay. I don't figure I'll be needing the rod anytime soon, but I'll borrow the line. Yank. What are these? Looks like Kwaman just had himself a solid lunch. That was quick. There were only bones left of his catch. Oh shit, can I have him? The remains of Quammon's catch, and a very convenient shape it is, if I may say so. Like a hook. Ah yes, how convenient, how useful. It's a long, strong, and flexible fishing line. I borrowed it from Quammon's fishing rod. Okay. Thanks, Kwaman. I'm just gonna... It's, it's the Orlowal village. 
You will never see me again, Quaman. Goodbye. Well, I said that, but he might. We might still have need of him. Or he of us. I'm, I don't have any idea what happens in the plot. I stopped playing long before this point. <laughs> uh, but we're back in, like, safe, comfortable territory for me. I have to give stuff to people, and I, I can do that all day long. Can you use this as bowstring for your, uh, lunar cannon? Let me see that. Oh yeah, that gonna work good. That gonna work good. Hell yeah. Alright, listen up. I got us what we need. And now we finish this damn cannon. Go to work, people. Give us a few minutes, lady, and we'll be all done. Yeah, I got us, but we... Yeah, it was entirely you, my dude. Oh, those are some tune stuck noises. It worked. Of course it worked, you wood-brained fool! I built it! So did you send one of these dudes to the moon, or what? It's the Stickman's Lunar Cannon. Are you done? Yes, ma'am. The Lunar Cannon is now ready to be tested. Well? Well what? Are you gonna do it? Do what? Test it. Test the cannon. Me? And get myself killed? I think not. But go ahead, be my guest. I don't think I'll fit in there. That ain't my problem. Oh. Well, maybe... Can I test the cannon? Be my guest. Ah. Uh, like, pick one of them up yep, and... the cannon is done. I feel like sleeping for a year or two. Hey, all done. And we did absolutely nothing. As usual, okay. aside from okay. shouting a lot and kicking mine and Woody's arse. Why are rope to and launch into the side of the mountain? We don't have a stick man to tie a rope to, but maybe we can... Yeah, this makes a grappling hook. Okay. I'll just place the hook along the bowstring, like so. And let the rope trail behind it. Okay, we're ready to fire. Okay. I guess I have to ask him to fire it. Can I test the cannon? Be my guest. Uh, oh, there's a lever. Tie a rope and launch it into the side of the mountain. That's how it works. Yep. Cool. Great. Excellent. There's a slight updraft here. The wind is channeled through that chasm down there and blown out and up here. Okay. It's a leathery creature with wings, like a mix between a giant bat and a pterodactyl. Must be one of the elation. It looks more like a warrior than a storyteller, though. I hope it speaks English. I mean, all tongue. I don't know if you're trying to talk to it. Can you help me across? You are human, and we don't allow human strangers into our village. If you wish to trade, let us know where your ship is anchored, and we will send traders to you with our merchandise. Oh dear, they're I don't prissy. have a ship, and I didn't come here to trade. I came to talk to your leaders. I'm sorry, but we don't allow strangers into our village. Oh, hello, Zach. Good to see you. Uh, thank you for subscribing for like six solid months. That is a ridiculous length of time to be subscribed. Although, I should probably mention that the, uh, 
One year stream anniversary is coming up on the 19th. Apparently, I will have been at this for a year. Hard to imagine. Is there another way to get into the volcano? No. This pass is the only way. Well, if I can't pass, it's not much of a pass, is it? I'm sure there's a secret cave somewhere that leads into the volcano. No, there isn't. <laughs> there's always a secret cave. Not here. I'm just gonna harass Are him for a while. Are you absolutely sure there's no secret cave? Human, you talk too much. Even for an elation. Oh. Uh, did you miss Hazel's nice cream? That's possible. Thank you. Uh, fortunately, the yes, entire archive is now. up on YouTube. Um, everything from my originating King's Quest 1 stream on. There was also some stuff from uh, the before times. But I don't blame anybody for missing those. I have effect effectively started over completely. So I'm just gonna f drink this and float across. Cause like... Oh god, I think I'm gonna throw up. That was so not appetizing. Weirdest thing though. I do feel lighter. Like I lost 90 pounds. I can't even imagine what people would pay for this stuff back home. Whoa, I'm fly! Not. I guess I still weigh too much to be carried on that slight updraft. Oh. Okay, can't be carried over on the updraft. Well, what about the wind potion then? I'll just make it even windier. I'll let wind out of a bag and some more people will die. That's the last of it, unfortunately. Ah! Do a flip! Eh, yeah, good enough. Human, you flew across the chasm. You don't have wings, but still, you fly like the elation. Believe me, I'm as shocked as you are. Are you the Windbringer? Uh... If somebody asks you if you're a god, you say yes. Yes, I am. This is an exciting day. Uh, remind me again who the Windbringer is. It's said that someone not of the elation shall come among us to float on the wind like an elation, to learn our stories, to bring the wind back to us, and to bring us into a new and happier age. Oh, is that, is that all? all? You know, I'm starting to forget how simple my life used to be. Family, friends, grades, boys, no prophecies, nobody looking to me for salvation. I don't understand, Windbringer. You should speak with our teller, up in the city. She'll be wanting to see you, I'm sure. We've waited for the Windbringer for a very long time. The teller? Thanks. No, Windbringer. Thank you. Anyway, apparently we're the Wind Waker. And, uh, we've gotta go. <laughs> Alright, we might as well Thanks exhaust him of... You should go see the teller. She'll want to speak with you. Okay, there are no more dialogue options with him. Cool. So, um... All we have to do is save their civilization, learn all their stories, and... Like, hang out with them? Be besties? Ooh, flowers. Nature's reclaiming lost ground. The contrast between wilderness and civilization is such a striking image. I almost wish I had my canvas and paints with me now. It takes a, a special kind of person to be in the middle of something like this and think, Oh, I wish I could paint this right Hello. now. Good day, stranger. What would you hear among the elation? I need to speak with the teller. The teller? Uh, go down into the city and you will see the castle. The teller, she keeps to the tower. She's old, and her eyes don't take well to the sun. Go down into the city. Um... Sure. When the city was inhabited by its original population, that tower was probably an important one, part of a temple or a palace. Now, though, it's just another ruin. Just another ruin. 
Makes you think, don't it? Nope. Okay! Mm. I'm kind of digging the music here. It's a nest. They don't all seem to live in nests, though. There are quite a few inhabited buildings in this village. Yeah, April has a habit of narrating everything she passes. And I'm sort of amazed more people don't call her out on it. Uh, she lives in the tower, so that would be the castle tower, I assume. And we've been given specific directions. Halt! Who would visit the teller? I'm the Windbringer. The Windbringer? You are not the Windbringer. Are you? That's what I said. How else would I have been able to get up here? I am the Windbringer. If so, you must prove that you are of the elation. Oh boy. There are four tales from the four corners of the world that you must know by heart. They are the tale of winds, the tale of stars, the tale of sea, and the tale of homecoming. I will ask you one question from each tale, and you must answer each correctly, or you cannot be the windbringer. Are you ready? No, give me some time to prepare. Then return when you are ready, and I will test your knowledge of the four tales. Okay. Everybody's got a tale to tell. Everybody's got a story in their heart. And we're going to have to, uh, I guess we're going to have to learn them all. So let's get started. Yeah, they very clearly said the Wingmer would not be elation. Which, you know, is true. Assuming I am she. I'm really starting to wonder, honestly, if, like, all of these ancient civilizations are putting the runaround on April just to get what they want. It's a young Alation female working with Clay. Alright, let's see if we can get some stories out of people. We've met exactly four people. There are four stories. Be careful. Don't come too close. I'm almost done with this pot. Sorry. Are you here to buy pottery? I didn't think traders were allowed up here. No, I came to speak with your teller. Really? I didn't know the teller spoke with anyone from the outside. You must be a very special girl. Supposedly. My name's April, by the way. Nima is my name. Nima of Taama. The only Alation village on Alace. I like your pottery. It's our craft. That and storytelling. But storytelling can't buy merchandise or food. I know a lot of people who live by telling stories, although I guess that's kind of different. They are lucky then. Not that I don't enjoy making pottery. It's good to feel the wet clay between my claws, to shape it into whatever I wish. It's almost like creating a new life, I think. I don't have a husband yet, so I haven't tried. Have you? Do you have a husband and children? Neither, thank God. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I was 18 turnings this spring. I'm ready for a husband, but I've yet to court anyone who could make me soar on the winds. I think the men of Tom are dull and timid. What about the guard on the road below the village? He's our age, isn't he? Isan? He's quite pretty. And his wings are big, but I don't think he likes me. He never looks at me or talks to me. And a good wingspan can take you a anything. long way. He could just be shy. Maybe you could talk to him, find out who he likes. But don't say I sent you. Okay. Sure, I can do that. Thank you, April. Look, a big wingspan can take you a long way. That's that's all I'm saying. Um. You know, I'm more interested you, in this than in learning the stories. You're welcome, April. Yeah, the Windbringer, now the Matchmaker. Apparently the Kidbringer. Although I hope she doesn't, like, dig her claws into the baby and shape it like a pot. That would be uncomfortable. Alright. Yo, hey, um... Who do you find attractive? 
So, Isam, that's your name, isn't it? Yes, Isam of Tamar. A good-looking guy like you must get a lot of attention from the girls, right? <laughs> Are you asking me for courtship? Me? No. Wings don't do anything for me. No, I was just thinking, maybe you had your eye out for somebody special? I'm without a mate. The women of Tamar are cold and unfriendly, and whenever I try to talk to one of them, she ignores me. Huh. Even Nima? Nima? No, she's too pretty for me. She won't appreciate my attention. This is like high school. Trust me, Isam. You go talk to her one of these days, and I'm sure you'll find you have a lot in common. Just be yourself, okay? You think so? Perhaps you are right. I will do as you say, Windbringer. Thank you. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Find me a find. Catch me a catch. <clears throat> uh, so, let's get learning those tales, huh? Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of winds, Windbringer. Do you wish to hear it? Oh, Very the much. tale of winds. Okay, pay then attention. I shall tell it. This is the tale of winds, my tale. And I pledge to tell it in yeah, my own words, tale, as you? told okay. in turn by my teacher. <laughs> in the village of Karan, in the mountains of tall winds, there lived a young Alatian woman named Iwana. Iwana had one desire above all others, to soar higher and farther than anyone else. And even though her wings were no broader, nor her body sleeker than anyone else's, <laughs> she pursued this, I don't this foolish it. desire without rest. And as time passed, she did soar higher, and she did fly farther than the other young Alatian in her village. And her name became known far and wide amongst the tribes of the mountains of tall winds. But still, Iwana was not happy. She was not happy because, in her vanity, even though she was a better flyer than almost everyone else, and to her eyes, she was still not good enough. She wanted to be so much better than anyone else that she would be remembered for all time as the best flyer amongst all the Alation. And so one day, Iwana decided to climb to the top of Mount Bakta'ana, the Tower of Light, and to soar from those giddy heights to the ends of the world. Mm -hmm. Her friends and her family pleaded with her not to, because every Alation knew that to soar from such heights was dangerous. That at such heights, the air was thin and the winds treacherous. But Iwana would not listen. And on a cold and clear morning, she climbed up the Tower of Light to the rock and the ice at the very top. From there, she could see to the ends of the world. And it brought tears to her eyes to know that now, finally, she would be greater and better than any elation before her. And so, Iwana spread her wings and leaped off the mountain. Those who watched her from far below said that for a split moment, Iwana soared, and she soared higher and farther than any elation before or since. But then the treacherous winds caught a hold of her, and the thin air made her plummet towards the ground and to fall to her death amongst the rocks at the base of the mountain. In her vanity, Iwana could not see beyond her desire to be the very best. And vanity always stands to fall. That was the tale of winds, my tale, and I told it in my own words, as told to me in turn by my teacher. Okay, so the quest for perfection will inevitably destroy you. Good to know. Iana Alicia for Icarus. The tale of Icarus is weird because... People focus on Icarus, who got his wings melted, but Daedalus flew just fine. Daedalus flew from his prison down to the shore because he didn't push design specifications. He stuck within established parameters. It's really an engineering tale. Like, don't push too far beyond your specs.
At least that's how I always think of it. Um, alright, so... The important thing here is that in the conversation log... Uh... In the conversation log, I think we've got... Yeah, we've got, uh, the full text. So if I need to to go back and revisit that, we've, we've got it. Which is good. Hey, so, uh, we learned the story, and also, he would totally bang you. Just so you know. Hi, Mima. Hi, April. Oh, we can't tell her that. That's a shame. I actually wonder if that was even required for anything, or if it was just like a bonus thing you can do. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? All right, let's listen to the I had stories. to learn the tale of homecoming. It took a long time, but I think I got it now. I'm better with pottery than I am with the tales, unfortunately. Do you want tale to hear it? Tale of Homecoming, all right. Please. Very well. This is the tale of Homecoming, my tale, and I shall tell it in my own words, as told to me by my teacher, in her words, and by her teacher in turn. Moran was a handsome young Alation man with strong wings and a hearty a beak. Moran. He lived below the white cliffs, where the water was salty and the fish plentiful. Moran was betrothed to Anara, the loveliest girl there ever was. She was fair, and slender, and tall, and her eyes were the clearest shade of blue. Good for Moran. But Moran was hesitant to enter into union with Anara, to become her husband and to give her children. He would always come up with a new excuse for why they had to wait a little while longer. Malting. Now, Anara was skilled at pottery, but even more so with stories. And the teller of the village had many times asked Anara to be her apprentice, to learn all the tales, so that someday she could take over as the teller. But Anara refused, knowing that if she did accept the teller's offer, she would never be able to marry Moran, because a teller cannot have a husband nor children of her own. Good to know. Her refusal to become the teller's apprentice was unheard of, because who could refuse such an honor? But to Anara, love was more important. Her love for Moran was beyond honor, beyond Good reason. Honor, Moran. But despite Anara's love, Moran was still hesitant. And then one day, he told Anara... I am traveling on a pilgrimage to the far shores. I will be gone for some time. And while I am traveling, and in accordance with our traditions, I will be freed from our betrothal. Not until I come back will the bond between us be renewed. It was not unusual for a young Alation man at that time to go on a pilgrimage, and the bond between the betrothed would often be cut while he was away, to be formed again upon his return. But Anara was heartbroken because she had thought that Moran would soon want to marry her. When Moran saw her tears, he said to her, Do not weep. When I come back, I promise I will marry you. Just wait for me, and stay with your pots, to make the time pass quickly. And then Moran left on his pilgrimage to the far shores. Many years went so, by, how'd he die? and Moran had exciting adventures on the far shores. But by and by, he began to long for home, and for Anara, and now he had finally realized that he loved her, and that he wanted to marry her. But when he returned, he could not find Anara amongst the pot makers. He went to visit her family, and they told him that, after waiting for many years, Anara accepted the teller's offer of apprenticeship. And that when the teller left on the last wind during the previous winter, Anara herself became the new teller. Angry, Moran made his way to the teller's nest, and when he saw Anara, he said to her, you promised me you would wait. But Anara did not say a single word in answer. She just turned around and lifted something wrapped in leaves from the cot behind her and gave it to Moran. Moran unwrapped the package, and inside he found an old pot, cracked and broken in two. What is this pot? he asked. And why did you not wait for me like I asked you to? And finally Anara spoke, and she said to Moran, 
I made this pot for you, my dear Moran, when you left, because I wanted it to be my marriage gift to you. But when many, many years passed, I finally realized that you did not love me the way I loved you, and to live hoping otherwise would be death. But I want to marry you, cried Moran. I came back. But Inara just nodded at the broken pot in Moran's hands and said, like an old pot that is left without care, a heart may break in two, and a broken heart can never be mended. And so Inara turned away, never to speak with Moran again, and Moran's heart, like the pot that was left untended, broke in two, because absence makes a heart brittle. This was the tale of homecoming, my tale, and I told it in my own words as told to me by my teacher, and as I will tell it to my student when the time comes. Bye, Nima. Nice work, bye, bye. moron. Also, I love how I voted. Bye! Well, that was both heavy and depressing. Yeah, the tale of homecoming sounds like a happy one. Let's see if we can get anything better out of the uh, kid, maybe. Remember, we are going to be quizzed on this. I've been listening intently. Hi there. What you doing? Playing. Yeah? What are you playing? Nothing. My daddy's in the castle watch. He's allowed to sharpen his claws. Really? My daddy owns a farm. Yeah? Do you have animals there? Sure. He has some cows and some horses and... What? What's cows and horses? Well... Cows are big, brown, fat animals with four legs and white spots, and they go moo a lot. <laughs> and horses? Horses are fun to be around. They run really fast, and they can jump over tall fences, and they look beautiful it's and It's going to be graceful. tough to listen to a tail the holding this voice. The horses is that you can ride them. I can run fast, too, but I can't fly yet. My wings aren't fully formed. When I grow up, I'll fly far away and see everything. I'll go see our horses. That would be nice. My name's April. What's yours? Saina. Will you be my friend, April? Of course, Saina. As long as you promise to be my friend. I promise. I rode a horse once. Uh, once. It turns out that I get seasick on horses. Which is weird, because horses aren't aquatic. Except for Kelpies. But anyway, I get seasick, and, uh, it was... It was not pretty. Or seasick, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was not pretty, and it was not a fun time. Alright, let's hear what... Squeaky voice tale we got here. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Yes, my mommy taught me the tale of the stars. It's a really pretty story. Do you want me to tell it? Sure. Please, Sayana, I would like that very much. Okay. This is my tale, the tale of stars, and I tell it to you in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in her words. In the small village of Jinjay near the rumbling hills of Onion, there lived a girl Onion? called Mona. She was a curious girl, and she would always get in the way of grown elation. Go play somewhere else, they would say to Mona, but she didn't want to play with the other children. She wanted to be where the grown-ups were, to see what they were doing, and learn from them. But one day, after getting many complaints from the pottery makers, and guardsmen, and traders, and soldiers in the village, Mona's mother told her that she wasn't to interfere with the grown-ups anymore. And that instead, she could go play with the other children, or sit still and draw, or work with clay. But Mona was always curious, and now, since she wasn't to be among the grown elation anymore, she decided to go exploring the forest that lay just outside of the village of Jinjay. She had many times been forbidden to enter the forest, because it could be a dangerous place. But Mona was very curious. Of course she wasn't planning on going far into the forest, 
But then her eye caught sight of a white Ooh, fluff tail. tail hopping through the tall grass, and Mona Wait, is this little red riding hood? Chase. The fluff tail ran away into the forest, and Mona followed, blind to where she was going, and interested only in catching the white fluff tail so that she could keep it as a pet. But then, after a good while, the fluff tail disappeared into a hole in the ground, leaving Mona alone in a small clearing somewhere deep inside the forest. She was exhausted after running after the fluff tail for so long, and as she looked around at the clearing at the unfamiliar trees and flowers, she realized that she hadn't been paying attention to where she was going. Not for the first time, her curiosity had gotten the better of her, but this time it was serious. Rona was too young to fly, and she had very little sense of direction, and chasing the white fluff tail had made her dizzy and tired. It was getting darker, and Mona was all alone in the deep, dangerous forest. Too sleepy and too scared to be able to go anywhere, Mona curled up with her wings wrapped around her under the leaves of a tree. And began crying. Soon it got really dark. And somewhere, not far away, wolves started howling at the moon. Mona was so scared, she was petrified. But after a while, her exhaustion got the better of her, and she fell asleep. She woke up when she heard a voice calling her from somewhere far above. Looking up at the starry sky, Mona saw a vision of the spirits of five tellers gazing down at her. You have let your curiosity leave you astray, said one. You are lost, and you deserve to be lost, said another. Poor little girl, said a third. We will help you home, said a fourth. But remember this, said the fifth spirit. We will lead you back to your village and to your mother only if you promise us one thing. I promise, said Mona. Whatever it is, I promise I will do it. Very well, said the first spirit. You will make the story of this night into your oh, own Oh, metatextual twist. we will call it the Tale of Stars. It will be a tale to warn the curious to be careful, continued the third spirit, and to not let their curiosity get the better of them. And, said the second spirit, to remind the elation that the spirits of their tellers watch out for them when they most need it. And so the spirits of the five tellers guided Mona through the forest, and by dawn she was home. And Mona did tell her tale, the okay. tale of stars, to everyone in the village, so that everyone would remember that the curious must be cautious, and that the spirits of the tellers are always watching. This was my tale, the tale of stars, and I told it in my own words as my teacher did to me. That was a beautiful tale, Saina. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hi. During the first half, I was gonna be like, Saina, does your species know any happy stories? But it worked out, it worked Have fun, out. Saina. Are you leaving? Yes, I'm sorry, but there are some things I have to do. Grown-ups are always too busy. Darn right I am. Okay, there's one dude left. Uh, one story left, and then we can get... Get on with it, but... Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of sea, human. Tale of would sea, Would you mind telling right. it to me? I would be happy to do so. This is the tale of sea, told in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in his words and to him by his teacher in his words. <laughs> this was a very, very long time ago, when the Alation were a strong people, and we could spend days riding the hot winds above the seas. We hunted fish then, and we were at war with the Merum, the wet tails. Akalis was one of the strongest warriors there was. His claws were sharp and long, his beak pointy, and his teeth strong. Be beak Akalis and teeth? was admired okay. by everyone in his clan, 
And because of this, he was cocky and arrogant. So one day, the teller of a callous city asked him to perform a very important and very special duty, to bring a sacred jewel to the teller of an elation town across the sea. Back this when they were particular jewel was very important because it signified a union between the two towns and it would benefit the people of both that it was delivered safely and promptly. Akalis grinned and told the teller that he would deliver the jewel both quickly and safely and that she was not to worry. But the teller did worry because Akalis was young and too sure of himself. But she wanted to test him and to teach him that sharp claws, a pointy beak, and strong teeth are not all a warrior needs. Where are you getting teeth? a warrior teeth? must also be wise Don't you have and beaks? careful. So Akalis set out across the sea on his flight. It was on the fourth day that he spotted something in the water that caught his attention. And forgetting his duty and following his curiosity, Akalis dived towards the water to investigate. When he came closer, he saw that there were marum in the water, foolishly hunting close to the surface, and Akalis saw an opportunity to again prove his might. As a great warrior to his people, and to capture the fins of a few wet tails. But this time, Akalis' arrogance got the better of him, because the marum had set a trap. As he dived towards the marum with his claws, a spear shot up from the water to hit him. Akalis struck the water and dropped the jewel he was carrying, and it was all he could do not to drown. Akalis was bleeding, and the marum were grabbing onto his wings and his legs, but he fought bravely, and finally he managed to escape. But even though he now lived, he was dead inside. Yeah, mood. Because the shame of losing the sacred jewel would always be with him. Akalis could not return to his village because he had neglected his duty to his teller and to his people. And so he went away to a small island where he could be alone. To himself and his people, Akalis now became the lost one. He who had been on a sacred mission, but had failed in his arrogance. A year passed, and one day, That's Akalis not the end of the story. met okay. traders from a ship that came close to his island. From the traders, Akalis heard speak of a hideous creature that lived in the sea, the Octowo. The Octowo was said to have a third eye, like a jewel and that this eye pulled <laughs> hapless sailors into its deadly eight-armed grasp. Akalis knew immediately that the Octowo's third eye had to be the jewel that he lost in the sea a year ago, and he now saw the opportunity to redeem himself. But Alation were not used to water, and the thought of submerging himself in the cold, harsh ocean chilled Akalis to his heart. But... He was the lost one, and if in his death he could at the very least redeem himself, to his own heart, then, it would be worth it. So Akalis fashioned himself a spear, because in the water his claws and his beak would be too slow, and he flew out to where the Octowo was last seen. And then Akalis dived into the sea. The dark water closed in on him, and his wings and legs went numb. But still, Akalis kept pushing down until he saw the lair of the Octowo. Spotting Akalis, the Octowo attacked, and Akalis saw the monster's third eye, his sacred jewel, shining bright in the darkness. And his heart was filled with a sense of duty and courage that he had never felt before. But as he began fighting the eight-armed monster, Akalis realized that if he were to fight like he usually did, he would not stand a chance. He would have to think differently. And so Akalis 
tricked the octowolf into following him through a tight chasm where the monster got stuck. And then he swam above it and, using his spear, tipped a rock on top of the octowolf. Swimming back down again, the octowo was flailing helplessly. Now, almost out of air, Akalis took the sacred jewel from the octowo's head and swam back up. Finally, Akalis could deliver the sacred jewel to the town across the sea. World's worst and upon returning to his village, he went to the teller, bowed his head, and said, Forgive me, teller. For in my arrogance, I thought I could do everything, but I could not, and I became the lost one because of it. You were lost, said the teller, but you are no more, because now you see the limits of your own strength, and you will know that a warrior must be careful and wise in addition to being strong and fierce. This was the tale of sea. And I told it in my own words, as told to me by my teacher. Well, the Tale of C would make an excellent animated feature. My god. It's got everything. It's got pathos. It's got action. It's got adventure. It's got a message for the kids. Yeah, happy Beowulf. All right, so we've um learned the full suite of stories. Let's see if we can pass the pop quiz. Uh, April. Okay. Yeah, Are up. you ready for the questions now? I hope so. Uh, no, give me some time to prepare. Then return when you are ready, and I will test your knowledge of the four tales. You're about to test my knowledge of the save reload function, actually. Are you ready All right, for the let's, questions uh, now? Let's roll on. Yes, ask, ask me, the me questions. your questions, gatekeeper. I am not afraid. In the Tale of Winds, which mountain did Iwana fall from Correct. in her vain attempt to fly higher and further than anyone else? I'll know it when I see it. Uh, yeah, Mount Bakhtan, the tower fly. Okay, they're all blatantly bloody obvious. Cool, good. It is definitely not Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Bakhtaana, the Tower of Light. That is correct. In the Tale of Stars, what did Mona see in the sky that helped her find her way home? A specific set of flags if you haven't talked to anyone? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it, uh, it would. But it would just have, like, these first two and then maybe this last one. And maybe, like, a gag answer here. The spirits of five tellers. That is correct. In the tale of C, what creature did the lost one battle in his quest to recover the sacred jewel? Is it option three? Yeah, it's option the three. Octavo? That is correct. My final question to you is this. In the tale of homecoming, what was given to Moran by his teller when he returned from his pilgrimage? The finger? A broken pot to teach him that absence may break a heart in two. You have correctly answered all my questions, and so have proven your knowledge of the four tales. You are the Windbringer. The teller would see you presently. Oh yeah, apparently all it takes to be the Windbringer is the mystic art of paying attention. Man, who knew? Uh... Hey, you do Come are. closer, human. I'm trying. Closer. I cannot see your face. Closer still. Come sit here by me. Scooch in, April. Scooch in. There you are. <laughs> you see, my eyes are not what they used to be. Ages ago, I could spot a ladybug crawling up a straw of grass from 15 tree lengths up. Now, I have a hard time seeing my supper. But my ears, balance be praised, my ears, they are as good as ever. I could hear you outside. 
learning the tales my children tell. You are a good listener and a fast learner. Ah, uh, praise me more. They were interesting stories and your people told them well. That is what we do. The Elation are the keepers of the tales, and I am their teller, the one who must know all the tales told since the day we came to this world. How can you do that? How can you remember every story ever told? The secret is to tell them often and to tell them in your own words, not the words of your ancestors. Doesn't that mean that the stories change with every generation? Yes, as all tales must. Change is important. Otherwise, the tales will have no meaning to us. They will just be words. And we do not care about the words. We care about what the words tell us. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I came to you to find answers to some important questions. Ask, and I will try my best to answer. What do you know about the dry kin? Kin are numbered four. Or so our tales tell. Two in this world, two in the other. The mirror world. The white and the blue, the red and the green. Do you know where they are? That's all you got? No. The tales never say. I like bronze. The kin are elusive. They keep to themselves. I have never seen one myself, and I doubt any of my kind has. The tales do say that our past and our future are tied to the fate of the kin, but how I would not pretend to know. This is one tale that is yet to be told. Mm, that makes sense. Have you heard of an ancient god or dragon that lives beneath the sea? Once. Long ago, when my people lived in harmony with the Merim, there were stories oh, you know of an about old that. god okay. worshipped by the Merim, who resided deep in the darkest depths of the ocean. Of course she knows about that. According to legend, the old god had once brought the Merim into their realm, into the ocean, and he was now sleeping, resting, before the journey back. Back where? To a great ocean amongst the stars. When the time Star came, ocean. he would gather the Merim and bring them home with him, back to their world, to their ocean. Strangely enough, we have a similar tale. It is said that the great wind that brought us here will someday return to bring us back to a place where we can soar forever on warm winds. Like heaven. In a way, perhaps, but without the need for any of us to die. The great wind will just sweep us up and carry us away. Every evening before I go to sleep, I recite this tale to myself. It is a comforting one. Do you know anything about the Guardian's realm? This is human business. Would you not know more than I? Your people are the keepers of the tales. You remember more than humankind has forgotten. Please, I need to hear what you know. That is very little. The Guardian's realm is home to the Guardian in his tower. No one is permitted within except the Guardian who was, the Guardian who is, and the Guardian who will be. That's at least three potential people. the Dryak kin, who were instrumental in its making. Have you ever heard of the existence of a hidden entrance to his realm? Oh, yes. Yes, I have heard tell of such a thing, though I would not know where it is. I gather that one of the kin may be able to tell you. Oh? Thank you. I don't have any more questions. I am glad I could help you with some answers. Alright, so there may indeed be a secret route, route into the Guardian base, except uh, we need a dragon to tell us where it is. And How long have your people been telling stories? Since the beginning, human. Since we came to this world a long, long time ago. You're not from Earth? From Arcadia? Not according to our tales. We came on a great wind before the Divide, when the Earth was one and humans had yet to learn of magic and science. But we were a different people then, and the tales we tell from that time are vague and incomplete. Like myths and legends, the younger relation pay little attention to these tales. Sometimes I worry they will be lost with me, these tales. 
and I am getting old, very old. I'm the Windbringer. <laughs> I know Lord you that are. Out. <laughs> it's strange to me to hear those words spoken. I did not think they would be in my lifetime. But here you are, standing in front of me as real as the sky is blue. I'm sorry I have to ask, but what is it that the Windbringer is supposed to do for you? I did not expect you to walk in here and have all the answers, child. The balance has both blessed you and cursed you, and it has sent you here to do what it wills. Sounds the Windbringer right. is said to be the first sign of the great wind that will take us away from here. For a long time, the elation have lost the strength they used to have. Our bones have become weak, and our wings fragile. Where we used to be able to soar for days on strong winds, we are now using our legs to walk rather than fly. Why this is, we do not know. Ten Yen. You know of the reason for this? I'm just guessing, but it makes sense. Go on. The tales also say that the Windbringer will unite us with our past and end the age-old strife. Yeah, she's I ready know. to hear this. You must make peace and be reunited with the Marum. You share a common ancestry. I have always thought we did. The tales were too similar, the signs clear. But my people, they... They will have a difficult time understanding why and how this can be. If you don't, both the Elation and the Marum will die out. When war broke out between your people, and you were forced to move up into the mountains, it compromised a precarious symbiosis. A substance called Tanyan was abundant where the Marum and the Elation lived in close proximity. It brought fish and heat and light to both your people. But now, living up in the mountains, your way of life, your diet, your customs and habits, they've all changed. And that's probably the cause of your brittle bones and fragile wings. Then we must make peace with the Marum and restore the balance between us, so as to strengthen us both and prepare us for the journey that will surely come soon. Well, that wasn't hard. When our sitting is over, I will speak to my people, and I will elect one representative from the Elation to meet with the Marum in the place of your choosing to open a dialogue. I guess it's time for you to talk to your people, and for me to make arrangements with the Marum. Where do you wish for our meeting to take place, Windbringer? You want me to decide? Um, well... I know. Send your ambassador down to the ancient caves by the beach. Inside, there are remnants of an old Alation settlement and a Marum city. It's a good place for your two people to meet, don't you think? Yes. And could you ask if they would bring their half of the stone? The stone? You have the other half? We have held on to it for centuries, knowing that someday it would be of use to the Windbringer. It will, trust me. Uh, what would the Marum get? They would also get Canyons. It is an important day, They're running low so on let it. us not waste light. Go and wait for my ambassador in the caves. Apparently something about the... Combination of the two make Tanyan. And I I don't know. Like the the Marum supply is running it's low and amazing. This place is Yeah, that was the glowing stuff on the walls. And scent. Sea and rock and nest. Wait, you guys never came down here? Home. Like twenty feet away from this where was you live. A long, long time ago. According to the tale. We lived in peace with the wet tail, uh, with the Marum back then. Now you'll be able to live in peace again. And with the Tan Yan bringing fish to your doorstep, you'll be able to eat well and restore strength to your bones. Is Soon that how you might works? even be able okay. to soar on the winds for days like you used to do. I hope you are right, Windbringer. And I hope that the wet, the Marum will see the sense in it too. They are coming, are they not? They said they would. Hush, I hear something. All right. We are here, Water Stiller, as was promised. Good. Now, as representatives of your respective peoples, you, the Queen of Amiram City, and you, 
Guard to the Elation Teller. Uh, goodbye, Zack. I'll only be here for half an hour more. the two parts of the One Stone. We hope that our peoples may be joined again, Elation, and that we may live in peace and prosper. As do we, Merrill, and we pledge to do all we can for this to happen. The stone is now whole, Windbringer, and the elation and the mirror will once again be as one. You may take it with you. Thank you. The both of you. Come now, April, and we will take you to our sleeping god. Ooh. May his wisdom guide you and lead you down the right path. We need to visit a god. Okay. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. sure. Oh, this is the spaceship of God, or I'm hoping it's a dragon. The sand is covering something. Uh, an orifice. Yeah, let's crawl in Some there. Some kind of organic sensor. Oh boy, I'm gonna crawl up a dragon's butthole. It's gonna be a lovely day. It's soft and spongy. Like it. Hello? Is anybody in there? Spooky. Well, I guess it's an invitation of sorts. No, no, dear. No. I'm gonna go in this bigger hole. I don't know. Ooh, rock. that's a weird rock. It just doesn't look natural. Can I touch it? Can I touch it? No, I touch it. Feels more like a shell than a rock. Uh, I don't think it's a rock. I think it's alive. But it wasn't a rock. The rock lobster. There's air in here, and it's dry. I swear, I'm never taking a bath again. Ew. Oh, that's an eyeball, isn't it? I... That doesn't look like a natural protrusion. It's too big and... round. Yeah, touch, touch the eyeball, April. I know you. Do not be afraid. Look! I know what you are. Look, dragon, big, strong. You. you um. Hmm. Yes. Yes. What would you hear? I do not like to be disturbed. I wish to be left. Alone. Yeah, that's enough of that. I wish to rest until the day of ascension. Okay. Yo, I'm not gonna tell a dragon that something is more important than his nap. Like, no, that's rude. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I need some answers. Everyone needs answers. Everyone has questions. I am not the oracle. I cannot answer all your questions. I don't expect... 
expect you to answer all of them, but I was hoping for an answer to at least some of them. Then ask. And be gone. Okay. Ask and fuck off. Got it. I need to know where I can find the gateway to the Guardian's realm. Start with the important part. So you come to me. They told me... Well, they as in the few people who could tell me anything at all. They told me that if anyone would know, it'd be you. I know. When the earth was divided, there was a doorway left open where the tower was built. But it's moved, hasn't it? That spot, when Stark and Arcadia were created, that spot moved somewhere else. Into the sky. Amongst the stars. Faith, great. Go but where? I knew. Your journey has not been a quiet one. Even down here, I could hear you. I speak with the dark people. They are my messengers. They have prepared a map for you. With the entrance you are looking for. You knew I was coming and why? Then, okay, I know this is probably a futile question, but why didn't you send the Dark People to me earlier? You could have saved me a lot of time and hard work. You are afraid of time and hard work. Yeah? No, but it's the principle of it, isn't it? No, it is not. You had prophecies to fulfill. You had a purpose. Bringing my children together. In other words, it ain't about your need. Okay, that's fair. This was important. And for that, I thank you. Cool. Well, it ain't about my needs then, but... As long as we're, you know, getting information. What am I? What do you mean? You said you know what I am. What am I? You do not know. God damn it. Then it is not I who should teach you about your heritage. You must make this discovery on your own. Of course, of course you gotta do it on your own. Listen, Why would you I'm not? I'm tired. Have... I'm wet. I'm at the bottom of the sea and I'm breathing with the help of a polyp stuck in my esophagus. So just cut the Buddhist bullshit about a journey of self-discovery and answer my question. Please? Your question has already been answered. That is all I will tell you. Your journey began with an answer. It is only now that you know the question. That's so not helpful, but thank you. It would take so much less effort. So much less effort to say something like, you know... Oh yeah, there's a prophecy about you, it says you'll do some stuff. And then die dramatically, you know... That's how it goes. It would just take so much less effort to say something like that. You gotta be cryptic though, you know, you gotta be cryptic. If I were in charge of being, like, a quest giver, I would sit there thinking of the most cryptic bullshit I could think of. Like, all day long. I would hire a writing team. So... What is the Day of Ascension? 
the day when the kin return home, when my siblings come to me, and we rise toward the stars for our journey back to our cradle. This is the day of ascension. Okay. It's the day y'all go so home. So you're going back to wherever it is you came from? Space! Will, eventually. When everything is ready. When what's ready? Everything. I will not answer that question. It is not necessary for you to know. I'm looking for a jewel called the Dragon's Eye. Yes. I have one such jewel. Oh, it's... Oh. I guess that's it. Okay. Take it. Thank you. Are you sure? Take what it. What else are you gonna do? It is yours now. It is part of your destiny. Are you sure? Okay. Tell me if it hurts. Now, I wish to sleep. You said something about a map? No, he said something the about a map. people have it. They will meet you. I will bring you to them. Okay. What? Now? Yeah, now. Why not? Yes. Hold on. Well, that's as close as we're getting to a full body shot on him. Um. The ship is enshrouded in a thick fog, very mystic-like. I can't see the face, but I think it's a man. A tall man wearing a dark cloak. He's one of the dark people. Whatever they are. Hi. Thanks for taking me on board. Who are you? Uh, well, I thought you... I mean, didn't the old dragon... Well, I'm April Ryan, from Stark, and I guess you're a dark person. April is this racist. But who are you? I? I'm just a student. Not anybody special. You are special. Who are you? I'm not. I'm just... Is this Organization 13? <sighs> I'm the Windbringer. I'm the Water Stiller. I'm April Bondu Mbata of the Banda and the Venar Kungang La. I'm a shifter. I will someday become the 13th Guardian, the Protector of the Balance. And I'm April Ryan. This is who I am. Yes, that is who you are. And you are a wave. A wave? Okay. Why am I, uh... A wave. You have a purpose. You play an important part in the cosmos. Oh, I'm Tavern. Okay. A wave is someone who propels people and events toward change, towards the future. And that's what I do? You are a wave. There are ripples from your passing, and they spread wide and far. Those ripples will never die down. The worlds will be changed by your journey. You're telling me that everything I do affects the universe? Everything everyone does affects the universe. You cannot escape it. You are a wave. Kind of the point of the thing, really. Uh, what it sounds like, though, is... I have no idea if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but the concept of, like, 
have earned from the Wheel of Time. Where certain people just make, like, they fuck with the pattern of things. Which, you know, sounds a lot like what April is doing. She's fucking around with everything. The ancient dragon, the blue of the dry kin, told me you had a map for me. A map of stars, yes. It was made for you in our library, and given to me to hold. It is yours now. Keep it well. It is the only one. Wait. We have a map of the stars. I'm looking for an ancient stone given to you by the Sentinel, the Fathers. You came for the stone. Of course we have it with us. Our ship would not have been chosen to meet you were it not for the stone we carry with us. Everybody's just waiting around for me to show up, so that they can give me stuff. Who knew adventuring was going to be this easy? It will not always be so easy. Of that I can assure you. But here is our stone. We entrust it to you. As we were instructed to do when the fathers first entrusted it to us. You know, there's a real contrast here, and I want to talk about that in a minute. Can this ship take me back to Mercuria? I mean, would you mind? We will bring you to Mercuria henceforth. It will take the night, but we will be there at first light. Okay, that's nice. That's fine. Thanks a lot. You are free to rest here, to sleep, while we travel. The flames will keep you warm, but do not move too far away. My brothers are not friendly with outsiders. They do not take kindly to intrusion. I'll keep that in mind. I'm staying right here. Good sleep. Yeah, okay. Uh, chapter nine. I don't know how many chapters there are, but we are making progress here. And that feels good. I really thought we were going to be stuck for a while. It's, I'm glad we're making real progress. I think what I'm going to do is save here. Did you sleep? Very comfortably, thanks. Where are we? In a minute or two. In the Mercuria Harbor. But there are barely any ships here. I do not know why. We must leave you here. We have other business. Carry your wave into the future, April. Whatever that means, I'll try. Mm. Harry, you're a wave into the future. Maybe the nicest way anyone has signed off gone? on us. They're gone. This can't be a good sign. I mean, duh. Uh, the city looks strangely quiet and deserted. And the sky, those are not ordinary clouds. They look more like, like smoke. What's going on here? And the water is completely still, which is even creepier. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to save here. And, uh, I'm noticing a real contrast here between, like, in The Longest Journey, April is the prophesied one everywhere she goes. And like she says, people just kind of line up to give her stuff. Uh, they just jump up to give her prophesied items and all. Over in Grandia, Justin isn't really the prophesied anything at all. Like, he just has a rock he got from his dad, and he's working his ass off to prove to the universe that he deserves to be, like, the savior of something. And even he doesn't know what yet, but he's gonna save something, by God. And I think it's a very interesting contrast between the two, uh, games. Like, April isn't sure she even wants to be here. Justin is all about going out there and kicking ass and discovering where his place in the universe is. Uh, the two characters would... Uh, Justin would probably try to lecture April for like an hour, and April would immediately like kick him into the bay and run, but... 
I just think it's a fascinating comparison, is all. Uh, anyway. That said, I think we're good. Um... Say, apparently you're still here, which means that your stream hasn't started yet? No, I guess not. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, I'm only worried about it in that, you know, I got concern for your uh, well-being and stuff. Okay, I guess that's technically worrying about it. Anyway. Anyway, um, I need to stretch and do some other stuff. So I am going to drop for now. Uh... This was a good session. We find we made some progress, and I feel, um, how do I put this without it being disgusting? Uncorked? No, that didn't work at all. Well, you know, I feel I feel good about what we managed to do tonight. So I'm gonna leave you all with that. We'll we'll meet up again soon. I'll be back to play more. For now, good night.